Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, so I just finished breakfast. I actually almost missed it entirely. Um, I thought it was until 11. It turns out it's till 9.30, 7 to 9.30, which is weird. Um, the one thing I'm gonna say about this, the breakfast here, is I wish that they had potatoes. I don't know why, but I think it's because they don't have like uh, at least a semi-kitchen. Like the other place has like a semi-kitchen so where they kind of cook some of this stuff. I don't know, I mean, I'm, it's probably all just microwaved or some shit, but how do you not get potatoes with breakfast? But nonetheless, so um, this is day four and I'm gracing you with my presence. Um, I hate being in videos for like this stuff. Um, it's just me, even though I do tons of other shit that is video related, but no, nonetheless, that, that's not what this is about. Um, this is going to be a later start to the day because I'm fucking tired and I got a huge ass blister on my foot that I'm not going to show you uh, that burst during, um, I want to say probably during Death Clock set. Um, and it hurts like a motherfucker. <laughs> um, but uh, plus there's not a whole lot of people early on that I'm just like, oh, I need to see like Yesterday it was kind of that way, um, but it turned out to be pretty good because we went, we did everything, um, and it was fun. And today I'm rolling solo, and I just kind of want to relax in a little bit. I'm a little more towards the night, like, of people I want to see. Like, everybody I want to see is, like, back to back to back. Um, and I'm looking forward to it, to be honest. Um, I have not seen Queens of the Stone Age since they toured with Nine Inch Nails way back in the day. And I'm I'm so looking forward to that set. Rants that I always love, and I've never seen Guns N' Roses, and they're a bucket list band. So it's like Rage Against the Machine, where I should have seen them. God damn it, Zach De La Roca. Um, but you know they're still on my bucket list for everything. Um, though they're the last, like I think they're the last ones on my list. If they ever decide to tour again, which I hope they do, then my old ass will be there. Um, but I've had a lot of fun this year. It's been, honestly, I feel like it was better than last year. It's definitely better organized. Um, but we'll see how today goes. So if there's less footage today in terms of this vlog, it's just really because I decided to take a, a later day. Um, and probably going to get in there about two-ish. I'm watching football, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, and then I'll go in probably... Uh, probably leave here about sometime during the second half of this Steelers Ravens game because that's all I get to watch here in Sacramento. But yeah, I just wanted to um, to talk for a second and um, say that there are some pretty cool people out there. You guys keep being fucking awesome. Uh, ran into some people that recognize me from this thing, which always blows my mind because I just do this for fun, pretty much. Um, and I enjoy like going back and looking at the experience and see how everything's changed from year to year. So, you know, uh, if you guys, uh, ever see me out there or see me somewhere, just come say hi. And if, uh, we're near a bar, then let's get a beer or a whiskey or a shot, whatever you want. Um, so enjoy, uh, day four vlog and thank you guys so much for checking out these videos. I really do appreciate it. All right. So this is the last time that I'm gonna be doing this walk uh, for this year. Unless for some reason I end up over here. I don't know why, don't know when, but we're doing it. Maybe I have to flag down the guy on the bike. Who knows? It's all day walking. There's a lot more people here already, but of course I'm also it's close to 2.30 that I'm getting in today. So, see how it goes. All right, we're in for the final day.
stay for this because Scott's not here with me. This is the coveted VIP area. The nicest thing I can see is the little thing, but let's let's take a little walk. We got, uh, oh, they got poke bowls over here. Corn in a cup and fruit bowls. Beer. There's a lot more places to sit. I know everybody gives this crap, but it's not bad. Think about it. More. For our service. Security. Biggest thing though, is their shade. So I'm gonna get some of the drink. I'm fucking thirsty. Yes. This is our first after 
the shock, y'all. Thank you for being here with us.
Right there is the greatest guitar player living right now. So for Gary, this one's called, and I want to see all y'all shaking your ass, called Old Friend. <laughs>
Run to me, I see some type of blood.
and I'm not over there. And uh, it's because this foot fucking hurts. I'm debating whether or not I should just go. We'll find out in a bit.
beat the Pratt a little bit um, because that foot is fucked up and it's hard to stand on. So, all right, well, probably a little bit of video left, but uh, I'll have thoughts when I get back to the hotel. So you can tell who is trying to beat the crowd by the amount of people here. It's actually not that bad though. Okay, hey guys. Um, I don't know why the last part of part four or the ends of the videos is always me like laying down in the bed and talking to you. <laughs> but that's just why get rid of tradition. Um, there was one guy that I met uh, briefly who has seen these videos before, and I appreciate him. Uh, but he like shows me pictures, like, "Is this you?" And it's like me, all like, Ugh. <laughs> it was it was terrible. The, the still frame that he chose to like say, "Is this you?" Uh, made me look terrible. So now maybe that should be like the cover photo of this stupid thing. Uh, it should just be the little face that I was making. But um, so. This year's aftershock. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I actually had a lot more fun, and there were a lot more bands that uh, I really enjoyed um, that I wasn't sure if I was going to. And actually, it was more on like Friday and Saturday where I got to be introduced to a bunch of new bands uh, and, and kind of checking out. So if you've seen the beginnings of those vlogs, uh, check them out today. And Thursday tend to be more of like the quote-unquote popular stuff, especially today. Because, um, like I said, fucking tired and my foot is fucking killing me. Um, standing on it definitely was not the right idea. And then walking on it all day uh, was also not the right idea. So uh, the first thing I do want to address is the VIP thing. So I did it this year. There's the VIP. But because Scott came... And I originally, um, so if you've watched these videos before, there is my buddy Ben and his wife, Kristen, that normally come. Uh, my cousin has come before, Angelo, and our uh, friend Patrick, his brother-in-law, has come before. And then Scott, you've seen these videos, or, you know, David as it goes by now. And um, so he decided that there just wasn't enough interesting for him to come on Sunday. So I was by myself today. And, uh, and when it came down to like, but first purchasing it, cause he, I didn't know he was even going to go. Um, I'm like, fuck it. If I'm going to do this by myself, uh, for this year, then VIP should just be the way to go. Like, let's just give it a try. I always said, I'm going to do it once. I'm going to do it once and have an idea of what it's like and if it's worth it or not. And this year, um, Scott came. <laughs> so I wasn't by myself the whole time. And I spent the first three days not utilizing the VIP at all. And and for that, uh, partially, it was a waste. It was a lot more money than I maybe wanted to spend for something like this. Um, but I used it fully today. And my experience with it, um, there's, there's an ups and a downs with it. Um, I just wanted to talk about the... Let's do the downs first. The down with it is that... Unless you plan to look at the two stages, you plan to be at the Jack Daniels stage or the Shockwave stage all day, I, I don't think I'd do it. If you want to go walk around and look at the rest of the festival grounds and go to, you know, the little small stages and see people and things like that, there's no point. Uh, the only thing that it's good for is, honestly, in some cases, like going in between, um, you know, the two sides. And if you want to get closer, you have an easier time, especially during the day. But always when it comes to the headliner, people tend to do uh, what I saw a ton of people do tonight, which is, uh, and did on we did on Friday, and then you do on Thursday, and you do on Saturday, yeah, all the days that you do, is that if they really want to see the headliner, they just wait over there and they watch the screen. We did that with Godsmack for Tool um, and for... Um, God, what was the band before Limp Biscuit that I kind of wanted to see? But um, it just, we just didn't do it. Um, and, it, you know, so we sat there, a lot of people, and then it's really difficult to get closer if you want to get closer. So with the VIP, um, it's a little bit easier, but for the headliner, it's not necessarily easier. What I will say, and you will see in the, you know, you probably already seen if you're getting to the end of the video, 
um, is there are nice spots that you can basically stand. And uh, there is next to the shockwave stage, which used to be, I forgot who fucked, the cola stage, I believe that's what it was. Um, that there's the, you know, you, you can see the barricade that is on, uh, if you're staring at the stage, it's stage right, um, which I think technically is stage left. Um, and you see the barricade and the people sitting there. That's got like a little hill. And you can you can literally sit on the hill uh, for some of the bands. People aren't standing. And you get a fucking great view regardless. So if you're just like, I want to save my feet and this type of thing, that's that's great. So we're getting into good stuff. Um, and if you stand, then you see above the whole crowd and you get a great view of the stage. And that's where all the stuff like Queens of the Stone Age, you can see all the clips from that. I actually, for... Um, Dance, Gavin, dance. I sat the whole time because I could. Because, again, my foot's fucking killing me. Uh, but during uh, Queens of Stone Age, everybody's standing, so I stood up too. And my God, it's like a crystal clear view. And it looked so good. Um, I just was actually amazed. Um, and then on the other side, you know, where the barricade is, it's, again, a little hilly. So you kind of, like, angle yourself down. And you're not really completely, unless you get, like, closer to the barricade, um then it's, you know, you got a nice little view of the, the main stage, of the Jack Daniels stage. So that's, that's, those are the good. The other stuff is, of course, the amenities. Um, there's a nice big merch area that's over there. The, the bathrooms are plenty and always seem to be empty. Um, lots of beverage places, easy. The food was really quick to get because you don't have to fight so many people. Though I didn't, I feel like they did the food better this year than they've ever done it because it's not like completely warped into just small pockets like they put it everywhere since they got rid of that like weed area in the back uh i think where colas was last year and they turned it into where all the food trucks are for the ga and then instead of making these like two or three lanes of like food stuff it was literally just you know a square around it you you didn't you didn't have to fight too much for it which i think was was great so even in the ga it was good but you know previous years take forever to get something to eat and it sucked. Um, but it's even quicker over in the VIP area. Um, and there was a, a couple of different things, like what I had for lunch today, which I think, believe they're based out of San Francisco, and I've had them over there. It was, that, that was fucking delicious. I, was, I had sliders and just regular fries. The fries were like so good and crispy. And the sliders, oh, they've got this type of like mayo on it. That's, that's just to die for. Uh, better than the Bacon Mania. The Bacon Mania fucking hurt my stomach and I think it was a Chipotle mayo that was there I have a feeling that maybe and I'm I'm this is alleged I'm not saying that it is but maybe it wasn't being kept with it being so hot you know that maybe it affected it because my stomach was just like Ooh. you know like it was good it was good tasting but when I was done oh my it did not like me at all so uh but there's a lot more and and then the other thing is the water filling station so this was bad about the GA is that they put those water so they put those big ones over in uh by shockwave uh, in between or close to where the, one of the entrances for the VIP is and those seemed like they're okay but that's not filtered water that's just like they took a hose they filled it with water and if you wanted filtered cold water you had to go to the stations in the back and those stations had a long ass fucking line there were a ton of them but the lines were still so fucking long and because what people would do they're waiting for so long to get the water is they'd fill it up they would drink the water and then they fill it up again um or, or douse themselves or whatever it is with it and that kind of sucked uh, i liked it last year where they had all these independent stations they were just all over the place um I like that a little better, but I bet you that was harder logistically where this was cleaner. But there was a nice little water bar that was over there. And I'm going because this this one bottle of water I bought today in the VIP area, this bottle lasted me all day. I constantly filled it that. It was quick. It was easy. It was great. Um, speaking of which, I want some water. Um, and uh, that... That kind of sums it. Also, the bar is, is, is there's you know, there's there's a nice one in the center that's like a square, and you can just it, it seemed like it was constantly open. I, I just think that it's the amount of people that are there. So if you you get VIP, you can afford VIP. Um, I think that it's I, I kind of think that it's worth it if you're going to utilize it completely. If you're going to pull a me like I did this year, and it's not I'm not blaming Scott for this at all. 
Um, but if you're gonna pull a me and barely use it, it's not worth it. Like I spent too much money and today I could have just sat over, you know, and just felt figured out how to do them. Uh, but I would have missed, um, I would have missed Queens of the Stone Age or I would have missed Rancid. And because of the VIP today, I got to see a bunch of bands that, um, well, I got to flop between bands that maybe I would have skipped out because I'm like, I'm too tired, but instead I could just easily walk over to one, see one easily, because I stayed at the major things. So like seeing like Daughtry and I Prevail today, um, I might have skipped one of them um, because I, I know I would have seen Rancid. And then I would have had to leave Rancid super early to go over to where Queens of the Stone Age was. I thought I had to do that with Rancid and Queen, again, Queens of the Stone Age. I did that. And I thought I had to. Um, and I don't think I, I necessarily had to. I think there would have been plenty of room. Because it looks like it's really full. And then you get over there and like, oh, there's plenty of spots. Go on. But I also needed to sit. So it actually worked out in my favor. So that's why you don't get like clips of Ruby Soho or anything like that. Or Time Bomb because I just didn't stick over there uh, in that area. Um, and then the other ones, like when, when I did the, like the I Prevail stuff and going back, it was more or less like, oh, I'm just gonna move around. I'm gonna, I just wanna be over there for a little bit. You know, and I, I it was constantly just me thinking of, I'm going to sit the fuck down because my foot fucking hurts. Um, and I'm still not gonna show it, you know. Maybe I'll show friends, but I won't show you guys because uh, it's, it's disgusting. Um, and I really need something to cover it. Um, and, uh, so, like, I think, like I said, I think VIP is worth it if you can utilize it constantly, and the fact that it's got its own merch area, and there's less amount of people, it's quicker to get merch, even though merch seemed like it was pretty quick this year to get, uh, at least from what, when Scott got it, if you get it at the beginning of the day rather than get it later, um, and then, like I said, the water filling stations and stuff like that, drinks, food, yeah, it's definitely, and it's, it's definitely cleaner, they've got, like, a whole crew that are constantly sweeping it and they're like volunteer crew or some shit like that. So that's the VIP. Now let's quick talk about the weekend because this is becoming the longest part probably of this goddamn video because I'm going to talk for like 15 minutes. And it's the reason why it's going to look longer, but it's just me talking to you at the end. Um, uh, I want to say thank you to the people that came out uh, and, and came over to me and said hi and, you know, gave, you know, we, you know, said thank you or I subscribe or whatever. Um, I really appreciate it. It does mean a lot. Um, I was happy today to find out that uh, my video for Swamp Song got posted to Reddit uh, in the Tool subreddit and everybody was complimenting at how the video and audio was recorded so well and um, that just makes me like happy because it means that I'm doing something right with the way that I decide to record things. Um, you know, I, and, and I do this because you know, there are probably some people that maybe didn't experience it. And I, I hear that a lot. And there's a lot in previous comments. And that some people have said, like, you know, I've had years before. You're the reason why I've come to Aftershock. Because it just looks so fun. And the way that you, you filmed it was good. I'm not trying to, like, toot my own horn and be like, oh, look at me. I'm the greatest person alive. I'm not. I just, it does make me feel good when somebody says that to me. And I appreciate it. So, uh, to, to all y'all that... that saw me and came up to me even the guy that had me you know show me the picture where I was you know looking dumb as shit uh, and I, thank you thank you so much and uh, you know hopefully we'll see each other another show at some point um, and then um, the other thing that I probably lost my train of thought oh uh, I, I want to explain some stuff from today because um, I was going to leave uh I I'd almost decided, or I had decided, I'm going to leave Guns N' Roses early because the foot was too much. So when you watch that footage, um, and you'll notice that a bunch of it's from like a weird angle on the side, and that's just because I decided to go back because I heard them playing some songs. Like I went and sat down when I finally sat down, fucking played Rocket Queen, and I was pissed because that's that I think literally is. I have a lot of favorites or a lot of songs I like from Guns N' Roses, but that would was is the one like I really wanted to see live. And I missed watching them perform it. I got to hear them perform it, um, which is fine uh, in this case. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I just ended up walking back over there, found a spot that I could stand at. So at least I could get some audio because I figure like, ah, uh, there's going to be if somebody, if I had left without getting, you know, a bit of Paradise City or November Rain or something like that, 
that people are going to be like, why didn't you get that? And I'm just like, ugh. So that's what went through my mind. Um, so, yeah, again, it's the foot thing. Uh, then the other thing is, is that, you know, I'm going to exclude Coheed and Cambry and Tool from this because those two are are part of my top three favorite bands of all time. So it's it's biased. I will always say Tool puts on the best fucking set, which Tool puts on the best fucking set. Um, and, and it's just because of my connection to the music. And Coheed and Cambria puts on the second best fucking set because uh, those guys are fucking awesome. They've always been awesome to me. Whenever I've gotten the chance to meet those guys, they've been super cool. I even got a redemption uh, arc with Travis uh, from the first time that I got to meet him where I confused the shit out of him. Um, but those guys are, they're, they're, they've been busting their asses off for so long and they're getting to the, like, it's a weird point where I, they're at that popularity and I hope that they get, they continue to get bigger and then one day they'll be the, the people headlining this thing. Um, it's like, like the guys in Gemini syndrome. If you do not know that band, Please, please, please check out the the stuff, the recordings I have of them. And if you have a chance, listen to their fucking shit because it's it's so fucking good. And those guys are the most humble motherfuckers that I've ever met before. Nicest fucking guys. Um, the, Brian is fucking amazing. Not just because his name is Brian. Aaron is just a one of a kind fucking soul, um, and he's so fucking cool. Um, you, you just, it's it's one of those things that. You know, I know, you know, you get these meet and greets, you pay for them, and they're a little bit nice to you, but it doesn't feel like that. It just feels like they appreciated that you would even take the time to do the meet and greet for them. Um, and they give you a really good meet and greet. It's not just like, hey, you're going to take a picture. All right, bye, guys. Like, they sit and talk to you for a bit. It's it's just fucking cool. I, I love those guys so much. Um, but I want to see I want to see more bands like that when they this, that comes to this thing. I want to have these discovery things and maybe it not feel like it's a corporate thing but and and i got a lot of them today with people like uh luna aura i didn't think i was gonna like her she came out i was like uh and then they she started doing this stuff i was like holy shit that's great uh amber wild i was surprised by the, the was it the dream ugh, fucking a this is dream somethings i know it's on the other thing i don't have anything in front of me to like read off of and be like oh these are the bands um those guys were, were absolutely amazing, and I only got to see a little bit of it. Um, so, favorite performances of the weekend. Uh, I, I I kept going through my head. I, I, I really think for, and this is personal bias, right? What is it for me? You know, Death Clock, I think, is my favorite performance of the weekend. I think that I, I haven't seen them since they toured with Mastodon. Uh, I believe it was Mastodon and Alice in Chains. I think that was the trio, if I'm not mistaken, um, but, uh, it, because it's been so long, I think that it really kind of biased me a bit, but the, the Brandon Small is, he, not only is he a funny dude, um, he's a, a fucking amazing musician, and, um, that, that was a, my favorite. Uh, then it was Limp Biscuit. uh, there was something about it, I think it was the crowd energy, how it, into it, I said it a couple of years ago, when System of a Down played, and you could just feel the energy of that, and how they sustained themselves all the way through, that's the way the Limp Bizkit crowd, like, really felt. And again, I also had one before, like, where I said, you think people don't like Limp Bizkit anymore? Check out this crowd. And then it was just them going crazy at a previous act Aftershock. Um, and then Parkway Drive. Uh, I really, really like those guys. I Prevail Today was fucking great. Um, I know there's other small bands that my mind just does not want to compute right now. Um, but there was maybe just one that I was a little disappointed in, which was Ithaca. Uh, I just couldn't get into it. It's not because they're bad. It's just, it's maybe not a thing. And then the other one, which people are going to get probably upset about if they hear this, was Sleep Token. I'm not calling them bad. Okay, that's the first thing. I think it's very good. I just was not in the mood for it. Like, I was expecting something different. Like, if I'm going to go back and and I, I just didn't know exactly what to expect and people were hyping them up so much and I'm like, oh, they're this great metal band. And then they went and I was like, it's it's like kind of metal, but it's like it, it I'm, and, and this is a bad comparison. I'm going to say this right now. Reminding me of like hearing Ghost for the first time. I didn't expect Ghost to sound like that. And I like Ghost. And the thing is, is that I, I think if I sat down and I was in the mood for it, I would really like Sleep Token. And I would think that they're a great band. And 
uh, because what I heard was really good, but we left Parkway Drive, and Parkway Drive set was so fucking off the chain in terms of the energy, and then we went to Sleep Token, and it felt like the energy just was kind of dragged out of it, because it, and, and by the third to fourth song, then it seemed to get a little more of that, that energy in there, but I just wasn't expecting it. I think that's what it was. I was expecting, and, and the fact that we arrived, like, we arrived five minutes before the set, and there was absolutely nowhere. That that's that small stage, that DWP stage, is just, for a band like that, and that many people, it's not. You should have stuck him at least on the Coors Light stage. Because I think the Coors Light stage, that area can hold way more people than under the goddamn bridge. Like, we were, the, the, the freaking freeway was blocking people's view of it. And you can kind of see it in my video because it blocked my view some and I had to find a little spot to go in there just to get some stuff. I think the DW page, the stage needs to be moved. I think that, you know, where the, um, the food was this year and, and maybe you can't do it because I think those benches over there are permanent benches, but if they were movable, put it over there. I think that's a better spot for it. That's a way better spot for it, um, than where it's currently at. Uh, and I know you have to put the sound booth and stuff in there, uh, but that hinders that spot. And that should be, that stage itself should be for like really small bands. Um, bring back the, the freaking, uh, local band thing where you get a bunch of unsigned bands and they can play, they play the first two or three, uh, spots for a specific stage. Like bring that shit back. We'd love to see some like local people get some love and, and, do me a favor and get forbidden for next year. Do that. Bring them an aftershock. Just reunited. You know? Well, kind of. New singer. Great singer. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I would say that. And then, um, in terms of the headliners, um, I, you know, I knew that something was off about M Shadows. He was sick, and then he had to cancel their, their show tonight because he could not recover his vocal cords. So I'm like, he's training really hard. And that kind of hurt the set for them. Um, again, I have to exclude Tool because they were great. Um, and uh, last night with Korn, what sucked was that Death Clock was at the same time. I don't know why you did that. I don't I don't get it. Um, I just don't, you know, because again, I've seen Korn so many times and we went and saw them. They sounded great. It sounded like they, they have been for a while. Um, you know, their set was interesting, uh, or the, the set design, everything was interesting. Um, and then there's Guns N' Roses. <sighs> Guns N' Roses is a bucket list band for me. That is, like, and I've been going on for 20 minutes on this thing. I swear I'll end this soon. Um, <laughs> they're a bucket list band for me, meaning, like, that I wanted to see them before I died, because my very first metal rock CD was Appetite for Destruction. That was mine. That I considered to be mine, right? Rock CDs, you know, my parents always, you know, we had a bunch of Beatles. We had a bunch of, uh, you know, my sister, she got Pearl Jam, got 10. That was hers. And I would listen to it and steal it and do stuff like that. But my aunt actually bought me Appetite for Destruction for my birthday because she noticed I was getting into metal music. And she's like, I fell in love with this CD, these guys. And it was like my first thing. And so she bought me the album and here we go. You know, my parents were like a little upset, but hey, it is what it is. So that's why they've been a bucket list band for me because, you know, I've been listening to them since I was a young kid and I never got a chance to go. I was never really going to concerts or anything like that. So it was always weird. Um, and so I really want to see them. I would say that two thirds of that set was fucking awesome. It sucks that they showed up 30 minutes late. I don't know why they did that. They played, and, and the one guy was like, oh, you know, what's going on? I said, I bet you they're going to play at 8. He was looking at me, and I was like, yeah, 8 o'clock. And I think partially it was because of Suicide Silence. I think that they wanted, like, there was maybe, I, I would want to believe that there is a portion of it that is like, oh, I, I want to make sure that they got enough of their own time, and then we'll go on, right? Because we'll start at 8, and we'll go to 11, even though curfew says that you need to end by 10.25, and you still went over curfew. And you had to cut a bunch of songs from, compared to the ones that you did at Power Trip. Um, which is fine, because you still played like 27 fucking songs. A lot of fucking songs. Um, but um, it, it sucks that you showed up late. It sucks that people were 
were dicks in a way, but I get it. I understand it. And then the other thing is that, you know, uh, Slash is a fucking god, and he, he stole the show from their set list. Uh, Axl Rose. Axl Rose was excellent on multiple songs, uh, and on a ton of songs. I would say, again, two-thirds to three-fourths of their set, Axl Rose was on fucking point and sounded better than anything I'd heard him sound like in, in a long time. And then there were other songs. And those other songs that are part of that 25% um, sounded like what people have been talking about. That they were just, abs- it was absolute garbage. Um, Better from Chinese Democracy is probably my favorite song off that album. And I know a lot of people don't like that album. I don't think it's that bad. I, I think it's not worth the wait if people were expecting it. But I still think the album's fun and I listened to it a lot when it first came out. And Better is such a good song. Um, he butchered the living shit out of that song. Butchered it to death. So, uh, there were just moments like that. There were moments where he was just fucking, I guess, on it. And moments where he was just, it was just bad. It was just bad. Um, but I definitely think if you're going to take one of those other three headliners, um, Korn is probably the winner, which is weird to think about. Tool is the overall winner. I think even if you took out my bias, I think as the headliners, Tool is the one that actually brought it and really brought it. And I think Guns N' Roses, they, the musically, they brought it. And the, the backup singer he's got, the chick, she's fucking amazing, man. Um, that's great. And he was utilizing her right in having her do a lot of the highs, you know, instead of him. Um, but yeah, okay, I gotta end this because it's like 25 minutes that I've been recording this part, and I really meant it only to be like 5 to 10, but I just got started talking, so. All right, thank you guys. Again, I do want to thank everybody that's ever checked out any of these videos, any of the stuff that I have. I really appreciate it, and if you are watching these for the first time and you made it all the way to the end of the video, um, you know, I, if you like the content, subscribe. Um, I don't always do stuff on this channel as much as I should because I haven't been going to shows a whole lot, but I'm starting to go back some more. And in fact, Tuesday's the used. I hope that's okay. I hope that foot is okay because I want to go to that fucking show. And then we've got a couple of Gemini Syndrome shows that I believe that we're going to. Uh, so I'll be back up in SAC during that time. Um, so thank you guys again so much for watching. And, uh, like I said, if you like it, like, subscribe. Let me know what your favorite set of the whole weekend was. I'd love to know in the comments below. Um, and I I do try to react to everybody's comments um, that they leave stuff. I try to reply if I feel like there's an, Apple, an ample reply that I could do. Otherwise, I at least try to give you guys some love um, because I do appreciate all of you. So thank you guys. And we'll catch you uh, after shock next year, right? Right? All right. Bye, guys.